Grace and Peace New Mountaintop and welcome to our weekend worship experience. It is always such a huge joy to share the Word of God with you and to share virtually in this time of fellowship and love. God bless all of you who are visiting with us. This may be your first time to a New Mountaintop webcast. We're excited to welcome you. Please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. I also want to encourage you to go over to my personal channel, which is Dr. A. Reginald Littman here on YouTube and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm posting videos for your inspiration that will add value to your lives. And if you're not signed up, you won't get those notifications. Also, I have been doing an e-class over the last few months that I would love to have you to participate in. We have a number of people who are already subscribed and I'm sharing with them free colorful PDFs of Bible studies along with audio and or video of me actually teaching that lesson. This is sort of our Bible study, but I only made it available to those who really want it. So you can go to clearstudies at gmail.com. That is the email address for my personal e-class that I'm doing, clearstudies at gmail.com. Go there and, and send a little word like sign me up or something like that. That's all it takes. It's absolutely free. And I'd be glad to welcome you into my e-class. Wednesday, July the 8th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., we will be testing at New Mountaintop. It is free, but it is limited to only 60 people. So you need to register immediately. The information will be on the screen. Well, God bless you, family. We love you so much. Thank you to our chat team, our congregational health and wellness team uh, headed up by Mrs. Hazel Crawford. We appreciate your efforts in this time keeping me aware. Uh, I'm not a medical expert, I'm a ministry expert and so I turn to the scientist to help make this decision. Hey, God bless you all. I love you so much. Don't forget to sign up for Bible study, clearstudies at gmail.com and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Dr. A. Reginald Littman, right here on YouTube so that you can catch my Bishop Littman live videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to inspire your life. church family. My name is Minister Siobhan Martin and I'm truly excited to have the opportunity to bring you our call to worship this morning. Our scripture today will be coming from Romans chapter 8 verse 37 and it says, Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to encourage you this morning to keep the faith and keep persevering no matter what you have to go through. We are all facing many hardships, many trials, but know if God be for us, who can be against us? God bless you, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of our service. Let us pray. Well, gracious Father, rule and maker of all things, for God, we come to you to say thank you. For God, you've been so good to us. Lord, right now we ask you to go into the hospitals, Lord Heavenly Father, and, and touch those who are sick. Lord, we ask you to touch those families, Lord, who've lost loved ones right now, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will just continue to bless our pastor, continue to anoint him from the top of his head, Lord, to the sole of his feet, O Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless our church, continue to bless the members, O Heavenly Father. Lord, for someone who's struggling right now financially, Lord, we ask that you open doors like only you can. Lord, you're amazing in everything that you do. You said you never leave us nor forsake us. And you said that you always be just a call away. And so we just call on that great name of Jesus. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you will continue to increase our faith. Lord, I ask that you would just continue to keep us close to you, Heavenly Father, like you and you can do. Lord, right now there are trying times, Lord. And right now, 
people find it hard, oh Heavenly Father, to, to, to do what needs to be done. And Lord, I just ask that you just increase their faith. Let them know that you're God that doesn't sleep nor slumber. That you're perfect in all your ways. And that you always see us through. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Because you're so worthy. Last but not least, Lord, we just thank you for your son who died on the cross for all our sins so that we may have eternal life and have it more abundantly. Lord, we just thank you for grace. We just thank you for mercy. We just thank you for you giving us those things and being there when you didn't have to be, but you still was there. Lord, we'll be grateful to give you all the honor and all the glory in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. What is tithing? What does God say about tithing? Do I need to tithe? This is tithing in plain English. Let's start from the top. God created the world and everything in it. He owns everything, so he certainly does not need our money. God has also given us the strength and abilities to earn money so we can provide for ourselves and our families. Of the money we earn, God asks us to return one-tenth back to him, also known as a tithe. In reality, God isn't asking us to give 10%. He's allowing us to keep 90% because it's all His anyway. Sometimes God even speaks to us individually about giving offerings above and beyond our tithes. Many people pay their bills and see if there's anything left over for God at the end of the month, but that just doesn't seem to work. If we put God first in our finances, we're stepping out in faith and trusting Him to work everything out, and He always does. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. When you tithe, you're not just giving money to the church. You're supporting the work of Christ, like taking care of our church, feeding the hungry, and so much more. God doesn't ask us to tithe because he needs our money. He wants us to see the joy in giving, because the more you give, the more you love, and then you'll give more, and then you'll love more. This has been Tithing in Plain English. Here's our special guest music artist today, Miranda Curtis, with the Blood Medley. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is healing. Healing, wonder-working healing in the blood of the Lamb. There is healing, healing, wonder-working healing in the prayer. Of the 
as we prepare now to receive of the blood and the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are reminded of the incredible sacrifice that our Savior took for us. For the Bible declares in Isaiah, 750 years before Jesus was ever born in the virgin womb of Mary, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes, we are healed. Ladies and gentlemen, the plan of God for our salvation long before the foundation of the world was that Jesus the Christ would divest himself of his divinity, take on the form of humanity and die a painful, agonizing, gruesome and horrific death that you and I could be free from the penalty of sin. For Jesus became the Lamb of God, which came to take away the sins of the world. And oh, how I thank God for the Lamb of God who shed his blood, who shed his innocent blood for those of us who would come into birth as humankind, born in sin and shaped in iniquity, as Job said, that we might be free from sin. It is our belief and our confession in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our belief in his death, burial, and triumphant resurrection that frees us from all unrighteousness. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, as we now prepare to receive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken that you and I might be free. Let us eat together. His blood poured out that our sins could be forgiven and that we could ever be free from the penalty, presence, and power of sin. Let us drink together. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Let us now continue in worship well, together. You, family, we want to share today with you from the fifth chapter of the gospel according to Mark and in specificity, verse number 28. The entirety of the text can be found in Mark 5, verse 28 through 43. 
but for the sake of brevity and the thought that the Lord would have us to lift up this day, I want to share with you specifically from Mark 5 and 28. Let us go before the Lord now for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, how we thank you for your grace and mercy. Speak to us and through us, through the help and aid of your Holy Spirit, to the end that someone may walk in a fresh and new relationship with you and that the believer might be encouraged for the hope that is ours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mark 5 and 28 reads something like this. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She said, that is to herself, if I may only touch his clothes, referring to Jesus, I shall be made whole. I want to talk to you this weekend from this simple subject. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Friends, it has been said that a person who talks to themselves is crazy. I want to correct and edit that. Let me litmanize that statement just a, just a little bit and put it like this. If you don't talk to yourself, you will become crazy. These are the craziest, most mixed up times we've ever seen in our lives. We've never seen anything on this wise before. We've never seen racism stick its ugly head up from so many surprising sources as we have in the last few weeks. COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on society and many have lost jobs and lives because of this virus. These are crazy times we're living in. And these are times that if you're going to survive, you must learn to talk to yourself. This story is about a woman who had a constant hemorrhaging of blood for 12 years. That in and of itself is devastating and dangerous because she is literally losing life every time she loses blood. She had an issue that wouldn't stop. And many of you listening to me right now know what it means to have an issue that won't stop, that you cannot find a resolve for, that you cannot find a solution for. In fact, right now, the nation has issues that won't stop. I love this woman because she had an audacious courage to do something she really had no legitimate right to do. For you see, a woman whose menstrual cycle extended beyond the normal time was deemed ceremonially unclean. In other words, she lived with a label but she also lived with limitations. Her disease would cause her to be quarantined and kept among other folk who were labeled ceremonially unclean, which means she was split up from her family if she had one. Worse than that, it impacted her economically and socially because she spent all the money she has on doctors who are not doing her any good. Luke, being a medical physician, emphasizes the fact that she had run out of money, run out of resources, because she had a pre-existing condition and could find no help and no resolve. There was no vaccine for her situation. And here she is, limited, labeled, restricted, unhealthy and also socially scorned because of a condition that she had no control over. And when we look at this woman, we find tremendous courage that gives us the information we need to survive in the times that we are living in with the continuous issues that we are facing. 
For the Bible says that when she hears that Jesus is in the crowd, headed to the priest, Jairus' house, to pray for his daughter, she gets into this crowd, intermingles, though she is bloody, intermingles, though she is ill, she intermingles and integrates this crowd with her bloody condition that is beyond her control. And her objective is to touch the hem of Jesus. Now, when you look at this story, it takes a tremendous amount of energy, effort, and audacious faith for this woman to break protocol, to break routine, to break tradition in order to put her faith to the test. That's exactly what the Lord wants you and I to do is to go against the grain, to trust him to change the issues that we're facing in this nation. You see, strong faith can free you when folks want to freeze you. She was in a frozen condition because she was relegated to live in a certain place, to stay at a certain level, and to never rise above it. But faith can free you when folks want to freeze you. You see, society wrote her off. Circumstances shut her out. But seeing the Savior caused her to breathe again. And when you feel like you can't breathe anymore, when you feel like you can't take it anymore, when you feel like life is on your neck, and when you feel like I can't breathe, if you will seek the Savior, in the midst of your sorrow, in the midst of your situation, he will put new air in you and let you breathe again. This woman goes from dormancy to determination. I mean, just seeing that Jesus was nearby and having heard the miracles and myriad of things that he had done for others, she knew he could resolve whatever issue she was facing. You must know today that Jesus can resolve all of the issues that we're facing from racism to classism to sexism to you name it. He can fix it. But you got to be like this woman and go after Jesus. Pursue him and connect to him. Don't just chase him, but connect to him. Because there was healing for the nation in the hem of his garment. Number one, you ought to talk to yourself because what you say is what you will see. What you say is what you will see. You see, your expression indicates your expectation. She said, she opened her mind and began to speak positivity into a negative situation. And we have got to take on the power of Christ and the power of our own mind to speak positivity into a negative atmosphere. The text says, for she said, that is to imply she had thoughts of positivity, thoughts of determination, and she spoke to herself in the middle of a hostile environment. I love what Flip Wilson used to say as his character, Geraldine, he would say, what you see is what you get. And how true that is, that what you say is what you will see, which means that what you see in your mind in your reality is the product of what you have said with your mouth. And I need you to understand something very important here on this first point, and that is this. Miracles are reserved for those with imagination. If you have no imagination, if you cannot see yourself any better off, any more productive, in a, in, in a better situation than what we're facing right now, then you have no need to expect anything greater to happen in your life than what you see right now. But if you will open up your mind and allow the lens of your thoughts to zoom beyond the now 
and to press into the not yet and believe God for what can happen, you will understand that what you say is what you will see. And oh, how important that is. The words that you say are so important. Proverbs 18 says that the power of death and life lies in your own tongue. How often have you said words of doubt, words of disbelief, words of dismay, words of disturbance, words of distraction, words that have actually gotten you off track from where God wanted you to be? And you couldn't blame the devil for it. You couldn't blame someone else. You couldn't blame your neighbor. It came out of your mouth and it came through your mind. And what you say is what you will see. I love this story because against all odds, she said, she said, she spoke a positive word in the midst of a negative environment. Number two, talk to yourself because your internal words impact your external world. Your internal words impact your external world. Now notice what she said. She said, if I may but touch his clothes, what faith that is. Her internal words were going to impact her external world. We need to speak peace in this time of protest and rioting. We need to speak better in terms of relationships from police authorities and people. We need to speak prosperity on this world. We need to speak health and wellness into the atmosphere because your internal words impact your external world. I think of Jesus on the cross when he was hanging there between 12 and 6 p.m. His first words recorded in the scripture were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He understood that his internal words would impact his external world. Imagine if he had prayed a prayer of wrath, if he would, had just spewed out anger and bitterness and envy against those who had put him on the cross. He didn't do that. Instead, he used his words to impact his world. I believe that that helped him to hang up there even longer. And it left the minds of those who heard him mesmerized that he could speak forgiveness amidst all of this frustration and wrong that had been hurled upon him for no reason, simply because he was different. And so our internal words impact our external world. Here's number three for why you ought to talk to yourself. Number three, your external worth is not defined by the external world. Your external worth is not defined by the external world. Everyone would look at this woman as a woman of disgrace, of shame and disdain. In fact, in order for her to touch the hem of his garment, she had to get on her knees. And when she got on her knees, the people that she was crawling beyond began to see that there was blood on her garment. And they began to open up and get back out of the way because for the Jewish mindset to be next to blood is to be contaminated yourself. And yet when they see her, they begin to cry out the blood, the blood. And they part ways and open up the way for her to get to the hem of Jesus's garment. So on one hand, you've got a crowd who is scorning her and running away from her. But on the other hand, you have a Christ who stops to pay attention to her because her external worth was not determined by the external world. When you finish reading this story, you'll discover where Jesus has an audience with her. And after he asked that question, who touched me? Everyone denies. Finally, she admits, Lord, it was me because I believed that if I could just make a connection with you, everything in my life would be better. Everything would change. And notice that she says in Mark 5, 28, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. 
when Jesus speaks to her, he says to her, Daughter, be of good comfort and cheer. Your faith has made you whole, not just well, but whole. And notice what he calls her, daughter. A new relationship was formed out of the darkness. Daughter, a new dimension opened up in her life out of the most devastating circumstances. Daughter, new hope has arisen, new joy, a new identity. Why? Because your external worth is not defined by the external world. I don't care how people look at you, what people call you. When they see you, they may part ways and get out of the way and begin to cry out, blood is on you. Well, that's a good thing because her blood was what got her to Jesus's blood. And can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, talk to yourself in these difficult times. Tell yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Talk to yourself and tell yourself, I'm worthy of being a Christian. I'm worthy of Jesus' blood covering my sins. Talk to yourself and tell yourself, I am intelligent. I am intellectual. I have integrity. I am somebody. Tell yourself, I have value. I have power. I have resources. I'm strong. I'm important. I'm significant. I value. I matter. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Had she not talked to herself, she would have ever got a chance to talk to Jesus. So you talking to yourself, talking yourself through these hard times, talking yourself through these difficult moments, talking yourself through loneliness, through depression, talking yourself through your losses, puts you in a position to be heard by Jesus. Because he does business with those who mean business. Talk to yourself. And at the end of this story, she's made whole. At the beginning of this story, that's exactly what she said would happen. Which means the end of your story is determined by what you say at the beginning of your story. What are you saying about your life? What are you saying about your family? What are you saying about these times? Talk to yourself. Get in the mirror and encourage yourself. And know that you too will be made whole. Oh, I forgot to tell you what made whole means. She went in to this crowd because she was unwell. She was not well. But at the end of the story, she's made whole. Notice Jesus didn't say you are made well. He said you're made whole. What is the difference between well and whole? I'm glad you asked the question because I do have the answer. Had he just said that you are made well, then her one issue would have stopped. And she would have went on her way. But because he said you're made whole, all of her issues came to a stop. How many know that Jesus has the power to make you whole right where you're sitting right now? If you believe it, just throw some hands up right now. If you believe it, type in right now. I believe. Put in hashtag made whole. That's you. That's God's word for your situation. That no matter how bad, how devastating, how dark, no matter how people treat you on the job, no matter how people treat you because of your race, creed, color, ethnicity, or even origin, He can make you whole. He can heal every issue that you're facing in your life. Have I got a witness on this broadcast that He is the one that can make you completely and entirely whole. I'm a whole person because I've been with Jesus. If you're watching me right now and you've got issues going on in your life, the greatest physician in the world is ready to make you whole. I don't know what kind of prescriptions you've been on. I don't know what kind of doctors you've been to. I don't know what kind of procedures you had in your life. But I'm telling you, Dr. Jesus is in. And he is taking on patience and he's making the wounded whole. If you don't know Jesus, pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I confess you 
as my Lord. Thank you for the blood that covers my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, my friend, and welcome to the body of Christ. I want you to go to our website right now, newmttop.org. Send us a message and let us know, I just got born again. If you'd like to be a part of our church, you can do that as well. Just simply send a message and say, I want to be a part of New Mountain Time. And we will get in touch with you. We can love you, minister to you, shepherd you, and share with you from wherever you are in the world. And we want to be that family extension to you. Be a part of our church. Be a part of the body of Christ. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to this weekend's word. It's short, simple, and sweet, but I hope you got the message. Be careful what you say this week. And get in your mirror. Talk to yourself. I love you. Peace.